Hey there, I'm Al. Today I have a video on how to project details from one mesh to another inside a ZBrush 2021. But before we get there, if you love all things 3D, be sure to subscribe. Okay, first things first, this is the dwarf I did in ZBrush Core Mini. Let's take a look at the topology, and it is terrible. All right, there's patches everywhere. There's sparse parts. That's just the nature of the beast of Sculptures Pro, whether it's ZBrush or you're using Dynamesh, something like that. So our goal is to get better topology here. So I need to duplicate this subtool. Duplicate, and I'm gonna rename this one new, just so I know which one is the new one and which one is the old one. And I have two of these meshes that are exactly in the same place, right? That is important, it has to be exactly in the same spot. That's kind of trippy there. Next up, I'm gonna go to the new one and I'm gonna stay in solo mode for this and then we'll take a look. I'm on the new one and I need both of these tools to be visible. What I need to do is go down to per Z remesher. I need to Z remesh this guy first. So geometry, Z remesher, press Z remesher. We're gonna let this do its thing. Okay, awesome. So I'm in solo mode. As you can tell, this is my new topology. So we went from terrible topology, but with lots of details that I've already sculpted in. Get rid of that gizmo. And then I have my new topology, which is a lot low res and I lost all the details, but look at that poly flow. It's gonna be great for sculpting. Okay, so next up on my new dwarf, I'm gonna go to project. I like to turn blur all the way down and then let's just press project all. Uh, this has poly paint data. Would you like to project the poly paint? No. Okay, so not a big change here, but you can start see like this edge around the nose. It is starting to become more crisp. So with the new one selected, this is gonna be the process. You go to geometry, press divide, back to sub tool, project all. Same thing, geometry, divide. And I know that there are um, macros that you can use, quicker ways to do this. I'm just walking you through the individual steps. And then project all. So as you can tell, I am subdividing my mesh here. Let's see, that looks pretty good. Let's do one more. So we're gonna go back to geometry, divide, and last time, subtool. Project all. There we go. That looks awesome. So why in the world would anybody want to do this? We have this and we have this and they are basically exactly the same. Um, our original has a slightly more detail in some of these strokes. We could do another subdivision level if we wanted. But let's look at that geometry, right? We're trying to get better topology to sculpt on. This is great for Sculptures Pro, but if I needed to come in here and do some extra fine oops, detail work, this isn't gonna work great at all. So we reprojected our details to get geometry that looks like this with all of our details. So when quads, when these polygons flow well together, when they're actually quads and not too many triangles, sculpting is much easier. You also get the added benefit of, drum roll please, subdivision levels. This is the biggest reason why. So if you work with subdivision levels, you could work very loose with Dynamesh Sculptures Pro, do all the details, push it as far as you can, duplicate your mesh, and then we can project our details and then get subdivision level, right? My other, um, the other dwarf does not have subdivision levels at all. It just is what it is right here. There are zero subdivision levels. That's it. This would allow me to go to my new dwarf. If I want to make large changes, go to subdivision one. I could smooth out some of this beard, redo it. Lots of cool functionality that you get with subdivision levels. So super powerful. Project your details anytime you need to. Hey, thank you for sticking around and watching the video. If you found it helpful, be sure to like and subscribe. I will see you next time.